Right, so I guess this is going to be the start of getting the dyno up and running again, which has been a very, very long time coming. So I can't remember off the top of my head, but I will have a look back and actually have a look how long it's been since we've had this up and running, but it has literally been years. So you can see we've got the two beds up here now. Obviously the one at the back is the one that was in the old workshop. That one's largely good to go, or it should be. Um, you see we've got another one here now, which I think I showed in a previous clip. This is about six months after I made that clip, so can't remember what I said there now. But we've got them both on the floor, roughly where they're going to go. So the first step really is going to be getting the new bed to the same state that the other one's in, all boxed in, still working, so it's sort of self-contained. Um, I'm not planning on sinking these ones in the floor. As much as I like them sank in the floor, and I will miss them not being sank in the floor, because it's really, really nice with especially low cars having them flush with the floor. But the problem with it is it's just, well, number one, it's a huge amount of work to dig out the pit and everything. And it's kind of, once you've done that, it's set in stone and you've got this huge hole in the floor. So then if you want to change anything in the future, it's just obviously the same amount of work again to either fill it in or make it bigger or move it and all the rest of it. So I think for the time being, we are going to keep it above ground and just make some super long ramps I'm thinking some fold in the middle ramps that so you can fold them up out the way, hopefully, so they won't get in the way in the meantime, but just have them nice and long. So hopefully we can achieve the same results, but just up on top of the ground. That way we're saving ourselves a massive hassle and mess digging it down in the concrete. And it does seem a shame to dig up the concrete when there's nothing wrong with it. But I probably will live to regret that because it was awesome having it sank in the ground, not going to lie. Anyway, so... First things first, we're going to start building the, the, the chassis or the frame around the bottom of this. So I've already sectioned out the corners on the original frame. What we've basically got to do first is just extend these original boxes out flush so we can run our new frame rail. We're going to run a frame rail right along the front, right along the back, and then we've got the existing sides. That gives, gives us a base then to build everything else on. So we've got some box section here, same as used on the other one to extend that out. It's only the front we've got to extend. The back is already is already sort of behind the roller, so there's enough clearance back there already. Uh, so that's going to be stage one. Um, get all these shone up again with the grinder. So then we'll cut some lengths of box and just tack them on for now, get everything, make sure everything's square and parallel, and then we can get, sort of go from there. Once you get the box in the bottom, everything else will kind of build up from that, really. So I've just tacked on those three extensions on the original chassis. So they bring those front three legs out parallel or out in front of the rollers, which is obviously where we need to be to build the framework. And I've just tacked on two uprights on the front and extended the uprights on the back. So that'll kind of give us the, you know, the box, so to speak, around the roller frame. Um, we have two slightly smaller supports in the front here. Obviously, they aren't carrying any weight over over the top of the retarder, but these will obviously be carrying the top the top frame, which the car will then obviously drive over. Um, so I've just got everything tacked at the minute, just measuring everything, making sure it's all square. It's pretty critical that you get everything square on these, uh, particularly now that we're going to have two, because obviously I'll be I'll be linking the two beds together using the front edge of the dyno and the rear edge of the other one. And if that isn't square with the rollers, obviously the two sets of rollers then won't be in line with each other, which is not good. So it's worth taking the time to make sure this is all right now uh, before we go welding it up. So now that we've got these four corner posts in position and tacked in, uh, we can make a start sort of fabricating the well, the frame around the bottom. So that's what will sit against the floor and eventually will uh, support the dyno on the rails. So I'm going to cut a couple of lengths of steel now to weld across the front and the back uh, at the bottom.
I've got the bottom and the top chassis rails just tacked in there now. So the top one there is what will essentially carry the top plate. As you can see, we've, I've got that set down fairly below the height of the rollers. I've done the same on the other one. Uh, the reason for that is I find if you have the rollers flush with the ground, by the time the car obviously drops down in between the rollers, you end up with like virtually no room at all to get your hands underneath and get straps on. So we're going to run the actual sort of the floor level as such at the same height of that top rail there and then we'll ramp up to the roller that that way the roller is just you just hop over the top of the roller and then drop in and so the car basically then ends up at the same height once it's between the rollers as it was when it was on that height there so just the rollers protruding and that gives you a lot more room to get your hands in um we well, used to be great actually down in the old workshop if you remember because we had the pit directly behind the dyno which is pretty awesome because you could walk in the pit and stick your hands right underneath anywhere you like to get the straps on. So I've just got that tacked at the moment. I'm going to try and tack everything I can up until the point where I start putting things in the way of fully welding it. Uh, just so then if I do need to move anything or change anything, it's easy. So we're going to do the same on the, on the rear now with the top rail back there. And then we'll do some measuring again to make sure everything's square. I've just ran along the front here and measured the gap between the chassis rail and the roller. And we've got a nice even gap all the way along, which is great because it means that means the roller is in line with the chassis, which, like I said a minute ago, is the most important thing to, to get right here. So we've got those two bottom and top members in. I've boxed in this end. We'll put a piece of angle along the top and the bottom so we can put a piece of sheet steel up against the end there. Obviously, then we can sheet right across the front. Um, come up slightly higher then for the retarder cover and boxed in. Again, it's all just tacked for a minute and we've just boxed in the retarder so it's all square down each side so we can just sheet up to the right up to the sides nice and easy nice square pieces just really got two main, main cross members to go in one there and one over this side uh, i can't put that in yet though um, i need to get the airlift and stuff sorted out but i've got no airbags for this one so i need to Sort that out first, so just need to get this all welded up properly now probably is the next step. Once I've measured it and double checked that I'm all happy with it. Right, fairly happy with the frame now. Got it all measured up, everything's square and true. So I'm gonna go ahead and fully weld all this up now because once I start putting anything more than this in, it's gonna get difficult to access. So I've already been round, welded all the extensions to the chassis on. Now just pretty much everything on top.